Welcome to Shraf's technical series. In today's video, we will discuss Boost Program Options Library. Program Options Library provides a way to capture user inputs and pass them to the submodules in the program. And also, the user inputs can be captured at the command line or through a configuration file or from the environment variables. In our previous sessions, we created multiple subprograms. So, in today's video, we are going to consolidate all of these into a single executable and using command line options at the CLI, we will call the subprograms. Now, here's a screenshot of the options that, are, that can be passed to the program. So I'll do a quick uh, demo of the command. So if I pass the help, so boost program options displays the help and all the options that can be passed to the program. First, you have generic options, which are the required options, which you pass them at the CLI. But these generic options also have default arguments. So if you don't pass anything, these default arguments will be used. Then you can pass configuration options. Configuration options can be either passed at the CLI or they can be passed via a configuration file in this format, key value pairs. So in, in this case, we call it app.cfg. So the program would read these options from the configuration file and use them if they are not provided at the CLI. If anything is provided at the CLI, it will take the CLI and override the values provided in the, provided in the configuration file. Along uh, with the help, so for example, if I say help, uh, and then we can do validations. So for example, for example, the subprogram option has a default of WS vendor, and also it takes only these values, WS vendor, Redis uploader, and web server. But say for example, if I give some test incorrect, option so it will say subprogram names test incorrect is invalid should be one of these so that way it displays the options that the program is expecting so let's go through the code we have main.hpp in the this is main.cpp which includes main.hpp and main.hpp includes a util.hpp file which is way down in this uh, screen, which includes all the option, uh, all the header files that are required. So you could either go through, you could go through the documentation here, or you can look at the header file in the bottom that has to be included for the library to be loaded. So we'll discuss how the library is used. First, we create our options variables, auto variables, which will hold the values from the CLI or the yeah, CLI or the environment variables. And then we create a set of strings for subprogram options. These are the options that are valid for subprogram. And then for log levels, we these are the valid options. So we put them in a set. Then the program options library provides options descriptions class which we instantiate with the description. So these are, it's called in the library, a group, a group of options. So if you see the CLI here, this is a group and this is a group. So right now we are describing the generic options group. So we created a generic options group, then we add options to it with the parameter name, full name, short name, then a description. Similarly, we have help, then a description. Then we have config file, location, long name and short name. Then we define what type it is. Program options value of type string, which once provided will be saved to config file variable with a default value of app.cfg. We have app.cfg in the same folder where main.cpp is running or the program is running. Then we give a description. 
similarly sub program name short code and then the type default value etc so we created one generic options group next we create another group of options which we call the configuration file options so these would be read from the configuration file so config add options and then we do a bunch of options so we have long names and then you know uh, long names then the type and then description so it goes on so we have bunch of uh, options we provide at the command line then uh, i took this from a sample in the tutorial they have an option for hidden option they have a group called hidden options but in this program we're not using them so i just let let it be there for this video but we are not using them in the in this uh, c++ program then we take the command line options as another group and the command line options will have the generic options we described above then config file options and the hidden options so we are adding all the groups to command line options then config file options we add create a group of other options so it holds this group this options description holds other option groups so it's just a way to group sub options similarly we created another group visible which has these now the idea is once you have these high level options description which adds the subgroups then you can only use these on different parts of the program in this case we created something called visible group and positional options positional options description p is another another op program options and uh, first we call we create a variable map of program options a variable map is the final data structure which will contain all your options you have provided at the cli configuration file environment variable this is your final data structure and this is where you get uh, store your final values to be used in the program now you have to fill that uh, variable map so to do that you first par command line parser you use command line parser to parse your argument count and argument uh, vector which you pass it to main and then once you do the command line parser then you store them into these positional options you created and then once this store is called this store would store the values from your positional variable into a variable map a variable map this variable map variables map and then you notify variables map so per the library you could read the description here once you do this and notify that's when your variable map is ready to use so it's a, an idiomatic way you can just uh, always follow this process to get your variables into a variable map and here we also read the configuration file from the uh, file system and once you have the config file you parse config file and put that in the variable map right so you get the command line options and the options from the cli and the options from the configuration file and you then notify vm notify vm finalizes your variables map now you can use them so here what we do variable map is a map so in variable map if count of help is there so if at the cli you have asked for help like this so you have provided help so the variable map will have help so this will be true so using boss uh, boost log trivial we are displaying the visible variables group which we have created here the visible would have the generic and the config groups so that's what we are displaying here you have the generic options and the configuration options else uh, so we have that help 
then we have if variables map which is a map count of version is greater than zero if will be true then we'll display the version then here we are checking the subprogram options if you have provided a subprogram like i did here minus s is subprogram then say test which is not provided if test is not in the allowed list set of uh, strings that's what we are doing here the subprogram options we're trying to in this subprogram option set we have described we have uh, defined above if you have provided subprogram if you find it if it is the end of the iterator that means it's not present then you do boost log trivial and say only these options are supported then here we parse the environment variables so boost program options options description and then you describe env so we created another program options and then to the environment variables program options group we have added these options redis host port and redis passport sorry redis password and then we define the type of uh, variables there are they are and then we once they are provided we save them to these auto, atomic uh, uh, automatic uh, variables which were declared above and then we variables map environment variables it's another variables map which will find contain the final uh, variables from the environment and then through store we store into environments variable map the store takes a function parse environment and parse environment will take this options description and then the parse environment will go through the environments that environment variables that are present when the program is running and then in this uh, uh, lambda for each environment variable we encounter when parse environment is running each environment variable we encounter we try to get the hash of that environment variable and if the hash of that environment variable matches to redis host then we return redis host which implies the store will store the redis host uh, in the redis host parameter which is this redis host variable into this it will store the redis host from the environment variable so if you encounter redis port you return redis port so the store will store the redis port in this automatic variable so that way if you have a password sorry uh, passport redis password you store redis passport password in the password option so that's how you parse the environment variables and then notify function has to be called to finalize the map so once you do this this map will contain all the values that you have defined all these options you have defined in that map here we you could print it but we commented out because these are all secret environment variables so didn't want to print them so those are all commented out similarly log levels so you get a hash of log level as string. If it is debug, then you're setting boost uh, logging core set filter to the severity level. So if it is debug, you set it to debug, info, info, etc. Then we do a subprogram name. And similarly, subprogram is a set. So we get a hash of the subprogram variable, then get the hash of it and using switch if it is this one call this function else call this function etc so that's how we parse the environment variables and run the program now this is utils.h uh, main.hpp so here it's just uh, includes the util.hpp file which is in the bottom i won't go through that in this video but you could uh, it's just a hash includes of all the boost libraries uh, something to be discussed in this file is if you see here 
we used a switch statement on uh, strings. So we used get hash. So we get the hash of the string and then we map the hash of that string with the hash of these. So we did the overloading of this literal. We overloaded the underscore quotes operator. So I picked this from Stack Overflow, this example. And I have the links here. So you could go through those links. But at the high level, what we did is, for that literal, we overloaded the these double quotes operator. And then once you pass a string in the double quotes, like this, we take a pointer, const pointer to that string as the parameter and then return the hash of it. And the get hash would uh, calculate the hash in this function. So that's how you're getting the hash of these strings because of this underscore uh, literal operator overload. And this is the main.hpp which we just discussed and this is the util.h which uh, the general util.h we used throughout these uh, videos. So it includes all the libraries we have used so far in uh, these boost sessions. So with that uh, I wrap this uh, video. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please reach out or you could uh, use the link here to post your comments. Thank you for watching.